Hola, bonjour, Murajo. What up to all my beloveds? Welcome back to the word of the day, our daily bread. Today is Thursday, January 11th. Hope everyone is blessed, safe, and good. This story is actually going to be called The Simple Request. They're going to be using the book of John, chapter 21, verses 17 through 24. And before I start, I'm going to go ahead and open up with a prayer. Father God, thank you for everything you have done for us. Pray to watch over us and protect us, forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Pray that you be with all our families, our friends, wherever they may be, that you keep them safe. Lord God, Jesus, pray for the enemies. Pray that you help us to apply this message to our lives. Help us to come closer to you. Help us to be examples and leaders to our surroundings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. Simple request. If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Please clean the front room before you go to bed, I said to one of my daughters. Instantly came the reply, why doesn't she have to do it? Such mild resistance was frequent in our home when our girls were young. My response was always the same. Don't worry about your sisters, I asked you. In John 21, we see this human tendency illustrated among the disciples. Jesus had restored Peter after he denied him three times. Now Jesus said to Peter, follow me. A simple but painful command. Jesus explained that Peter would follow him to the death. Peter barely had time to comprehend Jesus' words before he asked about the disciple behind them. What about him? Jesus replied. If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Then he said, you must follow me. How often we're like Peter, we wonder about the fake journeys of others and not what God is doing with us. Huh, that's, that's real right there. Late in his life, when the death, the death Jesus foretold in John 21 was much closer, Peter elaborated on Christ's simple command. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. That's enough to keep each of us focused on Jesus and not on those around us. Mm, ain't that the truth? This is a good one. This is a good one. Amen for that story. The two questions they asked today is, how are you tempted to compare your faith walk with others? To be honest, my personal answer is I'm not tempted to compare my faith and walk with others because I have learned to understand that God works different. God works differently through everybody. Um, of course, we're all called to go to heaven and make it to heaven. But one thing for sure is how God uses me and how God uses you is going to be completely different. Our, our walk of life is completely different. So that's one thing that a lot of us, even a lot of Christians, they try to do a lot of comparison of what this person is doing and what this person is not doing you don't know what god is doing and you're not on his timing so for you to say oh he's not a man of god because he's not doing this or he's not at this level for you to be one of those type of people is actually is kind of scary and you need to really really get on your knees and pray that god opens up your eyes and and uh kills your heart from judgment because again what God is doing for me in my life is going to be different completely different from what he's doing for you because we have two different walks of life so what the experiences I had to go through in order to come to Christ are going to be different experiences from what you have to go through to come to Christ Nobody walks the same exact path and God doesn't use people exactly the same, if that makes any sense. So, um, example, horse races. When the horses are racing and at the horse races, they put blinders on horses so they cannot see the other horses or what they got going on. So it's the same thing with your walk with Christ. You should put blinders on to focus and have a tunnel vision of going forward. So with you going forward, 
what this person is doing over here, this person is doing over there should never even matter. There's, it should have nothing to do with you at all. If anything, if you are that much concerned about this person's life and what they're doing, you should just pray about it. And trust and believe that God is working on things for the good. No matter where they're at in their life, God is going to meet them there and God is going to change their life. It's not up for us to judge and say, oh, yeah, no, he's not a changed person. He's not really close to God as he say he is. Just because you don't see what God is doing doesn't mean God is not working. So let's not be that that ignorant Christian and or even ignorant person at all. Because I say ignorant Christians because a lot of Christians try to do a lot of um, downplaying on other people and what they're doing in their life and how they should be. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. You shouldn't worry about another person's walk with God and how they're walking with God. God calls everybody differently. So do not judge somebody because how you're living for Christ and how you're how close you are is is not the same. That doesn't mean God's not working. So that's one thing for sure I had to learn that I don't never ever ever compare my faith walk with others. Um, cause sometimes I used to be like that where I was, I was wondering like, how come God's not doing this for me? Or how come, how come I don't have this? Like those things right there are, are distractions and a way that the enemy tries to plant seeds to just deter you away from what you're trying to do and where you're trying to get to it's because you're trying to compare yourself. You're trying to hurry up and get to this level, but yet you haven't went through those steps to get to that level. You're just trying to hurry up and jump up there when really you still have to go through steps. You don't know what people had to go through in order to get to where they're at. The pain, the suffering, the the just the, the trials and tribulations people had to go through before they even got blessed. So for you to say, oh man, I wish I had that. Like you really have to think about, it. do you really wish you had those things? Because at the same time, you don't know what that person had to go through. So you have to be willing and ready for God to bless you. But at the same time, you have to take the proper steps. And everybody's walk walk with God is going to be different. His calling for you is going to be different. God might call someone in a bar. To, and his life might be changed. That doesn't mean just because he's in a bar, his life will never be changed. Like, you... A lot of people get in Mr. School. Oh, he's in a bar. Like, you don't know. He might have been praying the night before he went to the bar. Then that might be the night that he gets saved. But that's not for me to judge. That's up to, between him and God. So you never know. That might be his last drink. That might be his last smoke. Hopefully it is. We pray that it is. But that's not for us to judge. And God will meet people wherever they are in their life. So... Don't ever, ever try to compare your faith walk with others because that is one of the enemy's plan to try to just confuse you and throw a lot of doubt and stuff. And just to the point where you start questioning God, oh, you didn't do this for me, God, but you did it for this person. Like, nah, don't be that person. It's not good. It's not healthy. It's not Christ-like. Focus on you and what you're doing in your life, and God will work through you, and he will bless you with the things that you need at the proper time. And he knows what you need exactly when you need it. So always keep that in mind. Don't ever compare your faith walk with others because that's a quick way to get discouraged and a quick way to find yourself in a place where the Holy Spirit is not there. Let the Holy Spirit fill you up. And worry about yourself, plain and simple. Pray for others. Pray for others. If you're that concerned about somebody and what they're doing in their life and what they got going on, pray for them. As far as judging them or criticizing them on their walk, that's that's not up for you. And that's leave that to God. Let God be God. You're not God. So on that note, second question, how will you keep your focus on Jesus today? I will keep my focus on Jesus today by just continuing to stay in his word, um, constantly praying um, and keeping him close to me. 
by guarding my heart on what I'm being entertained by, on what I'm doing on the day-to-day -day basis is how I will keep my focus on Jesus today. And that's my just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I'm not letting the enemy deter me because there's lots of reasons why I should give up and why I can give up, but I'm not going to because of the simple fact that I trust God and I have faith in God. And I know that all things are working for the good even though we cannot see things physically, doesn't mean God is not working. God is always working. So it's either we trust him or we don't. Plain and simple. There's no there's no other way around that. And I'm not gonna question my God. So I'm gonna let him do what he do. And I will sit and be patient on top of that. Humble and patient. Humble and patient. Because life could always be worse, and that's that's for sure. So I'm gonna read a book. A verse out of Galatians. Galatians chapter. Oh, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 4. Galatians chapter 6, verses 4, which is very, very. Um, another powerful little verse that goes along with this story. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. Let me read it again for the ones in the back that didn't hear me. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load so i hope that made sense to everyone out there and if it didn't sit on it pray about it and uh, just ask god to open your heart so you can have an understanding about this message so i'm going to go ahead and close it with a prayer heavenly father please continue to conform me into the image of your son Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Shout out to our daily bread. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. God is love always, y'all. And never compare yourself to others. God is always working. Trust him. Believe it. Peace, beloveds.